Okay. Um, video number two. Day number two. Um, so uh, yesterday uh, evening, I um, after spending a lot of time trying to get the video just uploaded. It's amazing, actually. I spent at this point, I spent a lot more time just trying to get the video shared on the interwebs than actually building and working on this project, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, it's the year 2022, but you know, um, technology is hard. Anyhow, um, so yesterday evening I started um, um, with the little like uh, formatting thing. Uh, so the formatting thing I mentioned yesterday, it is not a lot of code. This is it. It, um, let me run it here. So what it does is that uh, it allows us to see um, what we actually ended up encoding into this little, um, you know, homemade bytecode thingy, right? Uh, these instructions. Um, so it's, it's really straightforward. Uh, what I'm doing here is take the IP thing here, which is the array of instructions we've gathered up and there are seven of them. Um, and then I just out get a little bit of, uh, a little bit of a buffer here. Yes. On the stack for, um, a create this output. Maybe I should make it a little bigger. Um, um, and then I pass that buffer and the, the, you know, the limit of it to a function that I've named form with program, uh, along with the list of instructions and PC here is just the, the number of instructions. Um, at, since, we, since we're increasing PC here at the, at the end, it's, it's going to be, um, the count, the number of instructions, uh, could use a better name, but you know, YOLO. Uh, okay. So, so this one, um, is a, um, it's a very simple little function. What it does is that it uses this, uh, little append buff. Uh, we can jump down and look at what that is. It's very straightforward. Um, there's a little bit of a uh, structure that has a pointer to where we are currently like the, the current byte that we're writing to, which is also, um, the uh, the zero terminator null byte this is kind of for C C strings, um, and then this thing is just something that the the init function here sets up to be um, the the last byte that we can write to, um, and that's sort of like the the capacity of the the input buffer that the this append buffer is writing to, and and length here is a separate member rather than you know uh, subtracting these two simply so that we can get this um, uh, SNPrintF behavior, if you're familiar with that libc function. Essentially what, 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 what um, SNPrintF, we can just look it up in the manual. Um, what this does, let's see. Oh. So um, let's say here. So the the smprintout function and, and similar functions will write at most size and less than one of the characters printed into the output stream. If the return value is greater than and is kind of the key or equal to the size argument, the string was too short and some of the printed characters were discarded. The output is always null terminated unless the size is zero. Yeah. Um, so what's kind of neat about this type of interface is that you can um, uh, you can do something akin to like dynamic uh, memory allocation um, without involving any um, heap allocators or anything like that. Um, you get back the number of bytes that it would have written if the buffer was infinitely large. So that means that for any function that you know that implements this this type of behavior, what you can do is just jumping back to this. Actually, let me just like quit this uh, and restart this build thing. Uh, so what you can do with these types of functions is uh, when we're making use of 
uh, for me prog here, right? So uh, if this was sort of like a, a real program, and I guess eventually this, this might be more robust, we can do u size and uh, and let's say that this is, you know, 60, I don't know, 64 maybe, that would be too small. Um, I think, yeah. So then n here is going to be, um, so n is going to say 250 over here. We can say it says 250. And that's how many bytes would have been written if, um, buffer here was infinitely large. And now we know, so what we could do is like we could do if, you know, if n is the you know, size of our buffer, then we have to retry. Um, then we have to, you know, do, um, I guess we would do something like this. Buff is malloc. I'm not gonna actually write this for real, but if we had malloc, we would do malloc and we would do n. Um, plus one for the null terminating byte. And now we can put this in and we do plus one and uh, we'd be good, right? Or we can use a large, if we have, you know, a couple of these like pre-allocated buffers, we can use a larger one. Anyhow, it allows you to uh, do a best guess. And uh, if you're wrong, you can correct it in one go without having to sort of like incrementally, like, is this a good size? Is this a good size? Is this a good size? Um, anyhow. That is sort of beyond the, the the scope of what I'm doing here, but oh, um, but I thought it would be worthwhile to explain what that uh, what this what this sort of oops, what this sort of buffer thing is doing. So uh, that's why it has a length counter and and length here. This is just incremented every time anything is um, uh, is changed in this buffer. Uh, but P is only advanced and written to as long as there's still space in it. And that allows us to just, um, uh, to just have an, if you, let me just jump back here. So that allows me to just do this, like append, just append, 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 and I don't have to do checks and see if like, if, if we reach the capacity of the input buffer. And at the end, uh, terminate, it's just a helper function that, uh, oop, let's see is it just sets the, the current position to null, so like the terminating null, and then it returns the the length as it would have been, would P be infinitely large. And then you use like, just a, a, a min operation while it's actually like writing things to make sure that it's not writing beyond the, um, the, the valid memory region of the, the buffer pass then. It's, uh, it's, it's a pretty neat straightforward way to do this, at least I think so. Um, so jumping back um, to this little format function. So we've set up this, um, this buffer. And the next thing we do is loop through the instructions. Um, and uh, we print it out. I started out with something like this last night. I'm just printing out the the name of it and get up here is like a macro we looked at that yesterday um, that just extracts the, it just kind of extracts the bits, um, the most significant bits, I looked that up, um, of the instruction, which is the uh, opcode. And then it calls this uh, opname function, which just returns a sort of com compile time, like, you know, string of the, of the operation just makes the output here on the on the right side makes it a little easier to to see move load i and so on rather than a um just a, you know an enumeration kind of offset um anyhow uh but i ended up adding this uh this offset as well since when there are instructions like the branch instruction that jumps forward three, it's going to be useful. And I found it useful just looking at this yesterday to, to see is this actually correct? You know, is, is six, you know, <laughs> uh, is, is that six minus three, is that gonna end up in the right place? Um, and the next thing is just, it's just a switch. It's just generating a, a switch condition here with the, all the, um, the opcodes that are defined. And I made a change to this yesterday. Um, and 
I think this is something maybe I, I've, I've done in the past, but anyhow, it ended up being pretty neat. So in the uh, in the definition here of uh, can I scroll down a little bit? Let's see. Where's my um, so in the definition of instructions here, um, I've added another field. Maybe I had this in yesterday. Anyhow, I wasn't using it if I had this yesterday, but this. Um, uh, declares like what this uh, operation, this instruction, which uh, arguments it's using and it's encoding. And so ABI, I mean, I just made this up. There's there's no, it's, it doesn't have any, any meaning beyond what I named it here. So ABI means it uses the argument A and the argument B, and the argument B is an immediate value. It's not, it doesn't name a register. So contrast that to this one, this one AB without the I means that A and B both name registers. And A, B, a B, I, I guess we can read it like this, A and then B, I names an immediate value in, inside a B slot rather than a uh, register number. And similarly, another thing is K, and K would name a uh, constant. I haven't implemented constants yet, but, you know, assuming that there's a, uh, as you were talking about yesterday, there is, really is these two concepts. There are, there's global constant data you can you bake into your program. It's kind of, you know, just read on memory. Um, and then you have uh, uh, mutable locals, right? So input arguments, output results, and any sort of like temporary AK variables that you might need in, inside a, a function. Um, yeah, so that's it. So the, so the constant will be, um, uh, a numerical value of a constant in the program, right? So if you have constant one, constant two, constant three, uh, this would name a particular constant. Now, I haven't gotten around to this and I just tossed this in there just to play around with things and this might not actually be like the right thing. It might be better to um, either to have a, you know, an indirection table of, um, here's like a number of addresses to constant data along with like their alignment and, uh, and size. Um, since you know a constant might be of any size, right? It could be a five byte string, or it could be you know a sixty four bit or eight byte integer, right? Or it can be sort of like really anything you can imagine. And some constants will want to have a certain alignment and mem memory and stuff like that, so they will have, you know, you, it's they're not going to like just have a fixed size in memory. So there's got there's there's got to be some need for. Um, memory addresses when it comes to the constants at least at some point but you know I'm not bothered by that yet don't need that to um, to move along so that's what that means so I ended out here you can see a couple of more eyes here so branch and I changed the branch ops too from from the ones we looked at yesterday so this one is branch if zero um, so if instruction uh, I did that right that Oh, well. um, oh yeah, since this is an absolute branch, that's, that's why. Um, so yum to instruction number load register, that is the register C, right? So grab the C argument, let's say it's four, then load the value in register four, uh, and that value is going to be the, um, the absolute instruction offset in the program to yum to. If the value of register a, a register given in a argument a is zero. And similarly, there's a, there's sort of like a, a sibling instruction here that is not zero, right? So I think that sometimes what you do is like you have a instruction called compare. Um, you'll still need that, I think in this case, but you sort of like end up doing something like this. Uh, so you say, uh, you know, compare, uh, register one to register two, right? You store that in register three or whatever. And then you do sort of like a branch on your register three um, to, you know, some label. Um, and I think this is super common, right? So you end up with this, this is essentially a, a, a single bit, like integer really you just care about one bit. It's like a Boolean, right? Um, are these equal? Let's say it's compared equal. Are these equal or not? It's going to be one and zero. Uh, super common thing to do, right? Like any if case in, in a programming language, right? Is at least in, in 
almost all programming languages will be uh, a Boolean condition, right? If true, then do this, else do that, right? Or just pass through. Um, so in the spirit of just keeping it kind of simple and straightforward, there's just an instruction called, you know, that combines those two things. So it's just, you know, if um, this thing is zero, just do the yum, else don't do yum. Okay, so that's what that is. Um, mm -mm -mm. Also, I, I put up my, maybe I'll post a photo of my amazing sort of duct tape. It's literally duct tape or electric tape setup of this camera here. Um, I hope it's a little bit better on this camera that's built in my display that I was using yesterday. Um, mm -mm -mm. All right. So with having the instruction encoding added to this definition of operations here, that uh, allows us to to write this formatting code like really compactly and really small and straightforward. So this is like all the code. This is all the code needed um, to you know manage the buffering stuff and all of that, and to to produce this formatting that we see on the right side here. Uh, the little colors that is just you know I'm just picking the um, the uh, the six colors the six ANSI colors. There we go. I wrote it out there. The ANSI codes for just the, um, the four bit colors that pretty much every terminal supports. Just wanted, just wanted some colors. I find this useful since like if we, let's say we remove this, do, do, do. Okay. So we're gonna say is the, let's write the register number. So FMTR is being used here to write out the register number, right? So, uh, oh, I missed a little space there. Or a tab, I think. Now it gets since since most most or many register numbers will be like uh, you know one digit long, like eight and zero. At least I find it kind of hard to at a glance just spot if like is this a different register than this or are these the same? And so adding the why oh, am too far? So adding the little colors here, like just I found it really helpful to uh, to see that like oh this is the same as this, uh, and this is different. Um, can meet. So it's a small little, little hack. I kind of like that. Um, so we have just three macros, and maybe I'm using. Maybe you're watching this here, like, oh my god, like your <laughs> like preprocessor, like weirdo. You know what the hell are you doing? I don't know. I think if the code can get easier to read, I'm a, like all for macros. I think it's awesome. Um, obviously, it can be really useful, like for things like generators like this. Um, but also in this case, what's happening here and why this is kind of like small is that there's a macro down here. So when when I generate the switch case, right? With all the so switch statement, all those cases, um, uh, which happens, so this, this line here that we see, this line here is um, executed expanded, applied for each of the instructions that uh, we specify here. So for move and then for load and for load K and so on. And along with that comes the name, right? I wish I could bring these next two, but I'm trying to keep my, my recording really small so the text is, is, is large enough for you to see. Um, so we get the name and then we get this instruction encoding. We're gonna use that in a second. And this is just a description. I'm not using it for anything now, rather than just referencing them myself. So we get the name, and then we get the instruction encoding here. You just call it args. And then this dot to dot means, you know, whatever arguments comes next. Um, and we glue this together. So take this prefix string, which you can find up here. Like all these functions here have the prefix string, right? And then I glue yes, the args together. So essentially like that glues together this thing. So A, B, I, right? Or, you know, branch if zero with an immediate C value, right? So let's look at that A, B, C, and I. So that comes in here, A, B, C, and I. So that becomes right, A, B, C, I. And then is the final function up here. 
And since uh, maybe she quickly revisit the instruction encoding here, I'm going to put this in the first video. Since each of these arguments are starting at the same place, and you know, so A in the AB, you know, W in the AB case, right, starts at the same place as A in the ABCD case, and in all these cases, right, so B always starts in the same place, and so on. Um, that simplifies a bunch of stuff and it simplifies this too. So like a function that will print out four different arguments on the screen doesn't have to, you know, I don't have to call things four times since, you know, you just say ABC, right? And ABC in this case says yes, AB and so on. This is probably super obvious to you. So maybe I should just move on. <laughs> but, uh, so, so that's what's going on. Um, okay. So now we got a little, now we got a little, um, formatting thing and we can actually see what's uh, what we're doing here. So if we make a mistake, uh, that will be uh, much easier to spot, right? So if I put in a one here, or let's say I mix these up, right? So I thought it was like this, then we can spot that uh, what the computer actually sees is like multiply R by R0, sorry, by R0 by R0, right? And put in R8, that's not right. We'll make mistakes. I certainly make a lot. Okay. Um, for now, I think this is gonna be just fine uh, for the formatter, for the little debugging feedback stuff. The, it, it lacks, there, there are two things that it lacks. Like first off, it doesn't express the, the labels. And again, the labels are really just, you know, for the programmer, right? So a label here is this B value here. It's, it's really just like a, any name that you want, you know, like it can be a little cat or whatnot. But this label is for the next instruction, right? So this is going to be a label for instruction number three. So that's the multiplication instruction. We have it over here, it's instruction number three. Um, so a label is not something that is, you know, concretely part of the program. At least it's it isn't in in any of the major um, architectures as far as I know, and it certainly isn't in in this little RSM hobby um, instruction set. So either either will just like include uh, a label as like an instruction. I don't even know how that would work because that would you know change the meaning. Of the label, so that's kind of weird. Or more likely, like just infer things, just give labels like names, like B zero, B one, block for block, like or label maybe all L zero, L one, and so on. Um, but to do that uh, would make the formatter a little bit more complicated, and I'm sure I'll get to that eventually. But essentially, when um, when you get to something like this, right, any instruction that would name um, an instruction offset. So that includes the these two branch instructions, if it's zero or if it's not zero branch instructions. So this names an offset, a positive offset of three, right? To jump down here. Um would have to encode that into the program. So that might be another argument in this definition list here that is like, you know, flags maybe, and maybe one of the flags that can occur in here could be um you know, argument C names an instruction offset. And then the formatting function could use that. So when it's going through and, and printing or formatting a given instruction, you can see, does this have the flag argument C is a um, an instruction offset? And if it does, it can, uh, it can then like manufacture a label, you know, three instructions for work or whatever the, the offset is, right? So something like that could, could create labels. So labels are, are still missing. The other thing that's missing is that uh, my little macros for uh, for managing um, uh, retrieval of arguments here doesn't deal with signed integers. And so when you have a, sorry for scrolling so much. Um, so if we look at this thing, this instruction here, this is branch if not zero, with an immediate value of instruction offsets. 
So it looks at uh, register eight and it compares that. Uh, wait, what have I done? Yeah, this, the, the instruction encoding here is just wrong. What's going on? <laughs> so let's change that. Okay. So what's happening here, what the mistake I've made is that the um, uh, branch shift not zero, right? I thought it was it was accepting um, two arguments, right? It's not, it, is, it accepts just one argument, right? And it register argument and then the, the immediate, right? So zero, like register zero here doesn't use that. So let's change this. Uh, and now we're gonna just get some random number here, which might or might not be the same next time we run it, who knows? Um, yeah, oh, there we have a different number. Okay, so um, that's because the formatting function is not, you know, it's it's based on these things. So we need to go here. So this thing it says like no, it doesn't it doesn't use the uh, the b value or this the the c argument there. Um, and the the same is true for this one. And I should go and update this. Right? Oops. So this is gonna be b. So um, this is going to be B2. I think actually all of these are going to be B. Um, right? And then we drop the C. And just going to clean up the indentation a little bit to get the clean. We run that. Okay, now we get it. So that's the power of macro right there. <laughs> we didn't have to make any other changes. The, the formatting functions now are routed to just a different function, right? When a case statement here for that and instruction hits, we are just gonna go to this one. And before we went to this one, which is why I tried to print um, the value of an argument that we didn't set, which is just gonna have some random stuff from memory. So, uh, okay, then we fixed that, that was good. Let's a little notation for cleaning us. Okay, so back to the, uh, the issue here is that this is a negative value, right? So, the the instruction offset here is negative to the distance to this label, right? So this is essentially a loop, right? So what we're building here is if we're looking at this kind of um, um, to be assembly, we define a label at this instruction that's that is the the start of a loop. So we go down here, do, 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 and we come here. We do we multiply these things. So we put it in register zero, and then we subtract one from eight, and we look and see if uh, if eight is not zero, and if it's not zero, which is sort of like the common condition until you know the function is done, we just go back to b one and we we do this again, right? So we multiply, uh, and then we subtract, and then we check and multiply, subtract and check, and eventually we'll check here and it'll be like, no, it's not zero, meaning that it is zero, and it will not branch and will fall through and return on the function is done. So that means that the register offset here is negative. It's going to be negative three since the the program counter will increase one after here. Well, it depends on how we implement the little evaluator later, but um, yeah, let's say that it's three. Um, and so we need minus three, and I'm not really expressing that. So here, yeah, sure, this is going to be a negative number uh, that we store in here. But you know the way um, two's complement integers are stored is you use one bit to say is this negative or positive and you use the reminding bits to say you know what expressing what number it is right but the the way we we store things like we don't really say this specific bit is the assigned bit we just say you know just toss it in there um and so we're gonna have to figure out how to get this this out as a signed uh, as a signed number when we extract it uh, and for that we just gonna I think what we're gonna need is a uh, it's an instruction encoding actually to express the in instruction encoding so first let's just see if we can get that working um, so we're gonna jump to the formatter I think no let's just let's just see if we can just print it out here uh, so we're just gonna see if we can log this. We're just gonna grab this um, this instruction here. Let's just make a copy so we can easily just look at it. Um, yeah. 
Let's just do this. Call it X. Is that what I call it? I think this is what I call it. So I'm gonna make a copy of that. We can look at, and then in here, we want to get a negative value. That's got. I think it's got to be three um, of X, uh, and we want to get B. Yeah. All right, uh, B B O. Oh, okay, get B. Um, so that's some, you know, weird number we're getting, right? Five, two, four, two, eight. Um, I really wish that, that the C libc standard library had a, a printf function with like a binary output options. Um, I think that'd be really useful sometimes to just see what, you know, what are the bits like, you know, we can do hexadecimal formatting or, you know, decimal formatting, um, but you can't do like, you know, this, it'll just crash. I'm, ru I'm running this program like in, with address syntax and stuff. That's why. Um, but I do have a function that I can use um, just to get along here and not spend too much time on trying to fix things. So this little thing will just, uh, maybe I'll just copy this. What do I got to do? Actually, I can break this out and like simplify this a little bit. So yes, let's just do string fmt64. All right. Uh, capacity. So some sort of destination buffer. Actually, we got we gotta know exactly what size it is. Now this this doesn't actually mean much in C, but it's it's mostly for the programmers. Um, Programmers view. So we have some value and we say the base, and it can be, you know, no more than 64. Base 2 is the smallest base, right? Um, and I guess to make this like nicer, we can do um, base 2 is the, it's the smallest possible base. So we just clamp that value there in case we would ever happen to give it like 1 or 0 or something like that. And otherwise, it would just sort of explode, I think, or never finish. Um, okay. And we simplify this and we can just do this and then use this thing in here. Um, I'm sure you can write this function in a more efficient way, but this, this works for me. And we can, uh, yep, so destination bufflet, I think this is good. Oh, I messed up. Oh. Um, I have a length value that, of course, I'm not getting back. So let's just return that. So I'm going to return that and okay. then let's just add this to List of functions. Yeah, and it to the end here because this is not really like an RA buff function. This is just some string function, but you know, that'll do. Okay, back to this guy. So now we can have a little, uh, we can reuse this buffer. So now we can pass this buffer in. So the goal here, right, is to print this in, um, in binary so we can inspect the value. So we can take the 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 action line of digits printed, and then we'll take our value, which we want to look at, which is this, and the base. We want to binary base two, and we want to print this buffer. And yeah, we can just save ourselves some time. Actually, that's just this. And then, I'll say it's probably it's a little long it is. Okay. Now we see that when looking at this value up here, like the least oh, the least significant byte here. Um, let's see, let's count it. Three, one, two, three, four. It's all ones, and now we have another one, uh, and now we have our actual value over here. All right. So. Um, four. Hmm. 
Now you can all see how, how like rusty I am at this stuff. A very long time ago, I, <laughs> a friend of mine had a, a PC with DOS on it and had basic, we would write or edit um, basic programs in his basement. And we had no idea what we were doing. And it's still true today, I guess. Um, so let's just look at this little macro and see what I'm doing here. Maybe I made a mistake here. So let's just break this down. Mask one. I'm gonna have this macro too. Let's just call this X. Uh, so we have our instruction <clears throat> here, passing along, and the position. Right. So for <clears throat> excuse me. So we have argument. This size PV. Did I make a mistake here? Maybe. No. Yeah, we're still getting the same result, right? Yep. Again, um, let's double check and make sure that there's no mistakes happening here. Let's have this little space to separate it from the rest of the, the printout. There's no different function here that doesn't have the stuff. Um, okay. So let's see what this mask is. Actually, let me just have a look at So what I'm looking at is what I've done for kind of left that in. Okay. So this is what I've done for this other old project I have called Sol. So this is for extracting a um, or building a, uh, a side integer. I think this is why I used it. I think I can probably just do the inverse of this. Oops. Um, let's try. Okay. So we're grabbing this. Um, and max here. I'm guessing what, what that is. It's the maximum possible value. I have just the, the source file over here. So it's just one browsing from the salt project. Oh, do, do. Sum to yeah, that seems to be where is um <laughs> so we have instruction and then we just start out by just offsetting to the position right so position for B um is the A position plus the size of a so five that's the size of so it's uh, eight plus five so 13. where were we here right sure i'm spelling right yeah so we're just shifting off 13 and now we are at let's copy this So um, this little guy here brings us from uh, this place over to uh, to here. So now we're right there. Okay, so. so now we're right here. And we have now a remaining 19, 19 bits. Um, and so that's this mask is, is going to you know, make us a number essentially that represents uh, these bits. So it's these set. So we can uh, just mask these values out. Um, actually, I wonder, should we be shifting? No, wait, we is yeah, no, no, we are essentially, we have essentially done this. Let's see here. In a way. Okay. Um, 
So we just make sure that we have the right type. It's a U32. So we could probably also do that if we wanted to, but you know, this makes it the code a little bit more portable. Um, and down board, uh, what we do is we shift the, uh, shift this guy over. Ah! Should have documented this better. Um, let's just look at the, the mask. Oh, we have the size here. Okay, so the mask we're getting is this. Uh, might be useful to have a, a reference here. So we have um, the bit count. So let's just do I can just do oh. so now what's here um, and actually we do want to write this formatting function it's not going to add spaces and then we want to pad this out. So we want to be saying that this should be 64. Wait, no, it's 32. Um, stop. Okay, there we go. Stray, stray now in there. Um, okay, yeah, that'll be good enough. We can zero pad it to if we want. Uh, there we go. All right. So now we see we have 18, 19, uh, 19 bits, right? That we get, and that should be the total value stored. The next thing we want to do, uh, yeah, so that's the mask, I guess. We're not that interested about um, the mask. And let's look at our value again, and we know this is the, those, those bits, right? See here? I, I guess I can't do call up selection as terminal, but. Um, so that's the value we stored. And that kind of looks, that looks totally wrong to me. That looks like it's like a huge number, right? So maybe the issue we're having here is in the, uh, the way this is being stored here. So maybe we'll need to store this. In. It's X here. I guess I'll just keep that around. Start by breaking this down. Let's make this a little simpler. So we can say x equals construction of this operation, right? So this is just going to be some small number. Um, so it'll be number that? zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This guy. So it'll be number seven. And um, we just add a little annotation here for ourselves. Then we take the position of eight, which is uh, five bits in. Or these together, just sort of add the set the set the set the bits there. Um, we shift this over by the position, right? So the value for a, so the value for a in this case is eight. And then finally, and this is kind of like the this is the number we really care about. So first off, let's just use zero here to make sure that that we're gonna have an, an issue that goes through here. Actually, first, let's just double it. To make sure we get the same output. Um, and this value will be stored in argument B. 
is uh, uh, this PC. Also, maybe I made a huge mistake here. Let's just print this out. <laughs> It'd be fun to do all this work just to realize this is the this is where I'm wrong. Um, minus eight. Yeah, so that's not that's not right. You're watching this now and you're like wishing you can just tell me what I'm doing wrong, but I'm sorry I can't hear you. <laughs> Something obvious, I'm sure. Interesting. Five minus three. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I've been bitten by this before. There you are. <laughs> Well, it's still it's still wrong, but at least now we have the right number. Okay. Um so now you, we see this this did change. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, that's funny. So now we know we <laughs> get the right number. Yeah. We're gonna start out so that's it's actually minus two, which I think is is going to be incorrect. Um since we don't increase the PC here and the compiler is going to be, it's going to be angry here because I, I'm not sure if this, uh, if this might be undefined right here. I'm not quite sure. Let's see what it says. It will be angry, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unsequence mod, yeah. Um, let's just go back to this. I'm actually going to have to find a better way to, to actually write this. Uh, so this is super comfortable, bad ergonomics here, right? So this is essentially like, um, well, there's got to be a, a plus here now, I guess. Um, so three is the correct answer here. So after this instruction, we want to go back three. So minus, 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 right, and we're back here, and we, we go here again. So now we should have uh, three. Well, then when, when we saw this, we can just go back to the we were. Okay, so, um, so this value is going to be minus three. Um, and if we look at, so let's see if we can finish this. Okay, so this is not in the macro. Um, so if we look at what happens if we just essentially cast this sign negative number to just an unsigned number. Uh, we'll see that we get this really kind of large number, which looks especially similar to this. Might actually be a number, right? So let's confirm for suspicion. Plug this into our printing function down here for printing out a binary number. Let's see if it's the same. No, that's not true. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> Oh, I think it's because we're not masking. That's, yeah, it's probably happening. But I think I think what's what's going on is the, the size of the size of B, which should be established. And I forgot one of us. Uh, let's just do size of B up here. This is all five. No, 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 I'm totally wrong. This is the size of the B, the wide sort of thing, right? So it's nineteen, I think. Um, we should have a little microphone up here. So that would be this guy. 19 bits. Okay. So let's plug this in. Uh, yep, that's totally different. Not at all the same thing, but that's interesting. Oh no, that is the same thing. Oh, look at that. That is cool. All right. So what we got was this result, right? I'm just putting it here so you can see that it's the same thing. So this number is this number. So that's what's going on, right? So, um, and that is what we expected to happen. Right? That is fine. 
uh, we cast this number and they are, we are masking it out to remove the um, the bits over here or the, yeah the bits over here that we didn't care about with its garbage uh, and maybe that's maybe that's where I'm making a mistake but let's see so this is a function um, that I used or macro that I used uh, in this other project uh, and I don't know maybe I figured it out maybe I learned it from someone else uh, let's see what happens if we use this instead so we're casting us that's the same thing going on right and then instead we're um, we're adding this um, let's go bring this over here it's useful to have the definition of things Um, okay. So we have the max value of that of that number, which is like this in all ones, right? Um, so, oops, two nineteen. That's the max value. So that's what we're gonna put in here. So halt like that. Um, our value. Let's put this parentheses here. There's you know operator precedence obviously in different programming languages like you know which which thing happens first right is like this thing added to uh, to this thing and then the result is divided by two or is like this thing divided by two and then added together like in C um, this is you know this as as the same result like division and multiplication has high precedence happens before like you know subtraction and addition um, and then bitwise operators uh, and, and bitwise logic and stuff like that has like lower precedence uh, and, and in some cases irritatingly in C and this differs between programming languages like equality operator has I hope I'm not wrong like um, like a higher precedence than like this so if you do like uh, you know if X is like Y and flag then what <laughs> what happens is like this is evaluated X equals Y and then the result of that which is you know a, a one or a zero is that um, ended together with the flag right so so you'll, you'll see you'll see programs like that written like this but then if you go to like a, a different program language like go for example like this you know has higher precedence than the quality operator you know aside um, I often try to just put parentheses around things just to make it super clear so not always I'm, I'm not a great like you see up here I'm just like doing actually there's no other operators going on so maybe I'll give myself no care for that one <laughs> Um, enough rambling. Uh, okay, so we plug that in here to see where we add. Uh, so we got this weird number here. Uh, 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 uh. Where are we? Okay, let's see if we can get this working. Uh, so first we take the um, our number negative three. Right, we convert that to um, an unsigned number. Just recapping here since I it took me a little while to get the uh, the camera going here. So what we get is is this number over here. Right? So that's our first like that's what this is. There's an unsigned integer. It's, we're just sort of overflowing. So if we take this. Um, and we add two to it. Oh, I see what's in here. So we add two to it, and then we add three to it. Oh, we add zero, so that's what's going on, right? Um, we have that. This is an unsigned number now. Um, so th this essentially, if we add three to this, right? Uh, this number is the same as the maximum unsigned 32-bit. 
so all bits one is this number. So when we take this, when we take this number, this is essentially the same as doing this. Right? We got this. Okay. So that's where we add. Um, we do all of that. The next thing we do is take the maximum value that can be stored in this field. Um, the half of that, and we add it to this. Uh, which is I'm just trusting my my old self here. So it might be a little bit wrong. Um, okay, so we're doing that. And then let's just skip the mask. We definitely gonna need to mask that out. But now we have. Um, now we have this number up here. Maybe I should put this number up so we can like print it in both. So let's put it in uh, our instruction. We already have a variable for this, right? It's the X variable, so we can just use that. And so we print it in decimal, and then I think we're already printing it in. Printed in binary two. I was like, what is this number? <laughs> so, okay. so we got in decimal, and let's just let's do this down actually. Signed, and now we'll also print it as uh, a signed number. We'll be needing that. No, that's not going to Okay, so there we go. We got it. Uh, in decimal, and we've got an embodiment. Uh, so here we have the size, and then let's make sure that this is actually a correct value, right? Uh, so let's see how do we do that. Um, so we have 19, so let's see, we're gonna count to Five of those, 10, 20, so it's 19. Let's double check. Yep. Okay. So that's the maximum possible value. Oh, oh yeah. And then we add the mask, and that's that doesn't make any sense. It should be ending the mask. Okay, so now working backwards, this other thing. So this construction thing, right? So it takes the operation and everything and smash it together. We're not going to do that. But we are going to have to shift this over, right? And then I think it's the final piece of the puzzle here. Um so let's let's leave the the mask alone for a second. So we're gonna shift this over by um, the 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 size. Is that right? The position of B. So that will put it in the right place for the um, in our instruction. So. It'll move it from over here up to here. Oops, right? So we should be seeing if we paste this over here. I wish my other can do this for me, but well, I guess there's like one shortcut. So this is where it starts, 
Right. So go down. We remove a shift. We're going to give a number. See if we have this, right? Which is the. I'll do this little trick again. So this is the. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So that's the seven number, right? And we have shifted over by um, by its its position, right? Which is five plus eight. So it's happening. Going back. Shift there, yum. So now we have the value up there. So that's what we want eventually. And I think the bug in this is going to be easier to to do without that because if we just round trip and we shift it back, right? So it wouldn't really matter. Uh, so this is the value we want. So now we want to do the inverse of this. Um, and let's see what I did up here. Get. Okay, that looks promising. Might be as simple as that. Um, so this and the other solve thing just extracts this value. So that is equivalent to just x like this. This again is the max value divided by two. Uh, and now this makes a lot of sense to me suddenly. Um, so if we do x to see what we get on the other end, Let's see, and now maybe we want this to be, oops. Um, so we get me in the minus three. It worked. Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. Now we know what to do, right? First off, we're gonna need a max value. Um, and I just gotta plug this in for now, but we can be more clever about it uh, for the different arguments. Uh, so for for B W, which is the one we're dealing with now. Uh, so let's do max. Also, part of my like naming here. This is like not very convenient naming, is it? But that's that's uh, it's which my editor can just be like, hey, shove it in hexadecimal. Sure, it can, but I probably just don't know how to do it. So I use Python. I guess she has run Python as a background. Oh. Okay. okay. Now we can use this. Okay. Sorry, max value. Ooh. Not bad. So, max value. And we work our way back again to some sort of macro that we can use, right? So this uh, is extract. And this is encode. Oh, and we can say this crap, but I don't need it anymore. Um, here so set arg and we get a new one of these for uh, like a assigned argument which does this right and code um, plus you know we also need to shift it over as we was doing before to get it into the the right position in the um, uh, in the instruction and we have two of these actually there's a there's a make function here, and then there's a set function here. Um, so we're gonna have to 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 make each of these. Um, do we? Hmm. I guess. I guess we don't. Well, what I'm thinking, that like this could just be a little extra macro we have to use. Let's just try this. Uh, define, um, oof, s arc. <laughs> just reaching here. Uh, and, uh, oh gosh, I keep hitting like the, the wrong key on my keyboard. Um, 
not just like for some reason that just see all right the editor has many ways to i use like different keys now to switch it has like four maybe different key combos to switch and then now about that so sr and you would pass like some a a signed number in here and then this would convert it into just like uh you know an argument that's not signed so we just do this and take the x in there it's the value we have this use some map to make this macro more robust uh and leave these out to make it clear and then we can also have to bring the max value here of that right so maybe we will end up actually with a with a couple of helper macros but max well maybe Well, and so what we would do is um, to set an argument, we would set argument the uh, number of it, and B would be you know number uh, number one, right? Uh, so, sorry, the value of it, which in our case is three, uh, and then the position of the argument. So we have these position, which are bit offsets B, right? which is um, 13 bits, maybe? Oh, okay, it doesn't matter. So the offset B, um, and then we have the, you know, the, the size of B, the wide version, which is 19. Um, let's go, let's make a mistake. This is the instruction. I shouldn't call this I. <laughs> uh, minus three. All right. So um, this would not work right now. This is what I was doing, right? Because this is just not going to give us the correct value. So we'll, what we want to do is, is this. And this would give us the right value. So let's see if that if that is right. Um, let's see if I have done a thing. So first off, we're just gonna um, do that for now, and I'm just gonna make a copy here of the of the instructions as we modify this. Don't want to spend time like writing this code on here, and then do um, set set b w right on y. So y equals oh. We can set. So we're gonna change that part of X. Uh, we have the position of B, and we have the size of B, W, the wide one, 19 bits. And then finally, we have the arguments. Too many arguments. Oh. Then, too few arguments. Oh yeah, since we also have to provide the max value here. So we have the max bw value. And now if we do if we extract that didn't work. Still working? Yeah, okay. So I need some, some mistake here. Like so. Do the wrong thing earlier. Um, so that does the number day. 
Come on. Yeah, okay, good, good. I didn't make it. Dumb mistake there. So where is the mistake done? Um, right, so if we do this, it works. Oh, we have to define why it works. So that works. It's not the same. And set BW is correct. Close BW. See, sometimes you just like end up in these things. I don't know. This is might take another hour or two for me to figure this out. It's uh, um, it's not my strong suit. This stuff. Um, it's also incredibly boring, but you know, get, you just got to do it. But I think I'm just going to end it here and I'll loop back later about how, um, how it went, if it's anything of interest. And I think beyond this, um, this is going to get this, you know, the format and this stuff working. I think it's very important to get these like tiny little things. It might seem very tedious to like double check everything, but like once I'm through with this and I've you know, made sure that every ten little thing is is working as intended. I can trust those things, right? And I don't have to re revisit that when there are other bugs in the future. I don't have to question these things as being the course of those bugs. Um, and that, at least to me, is a really nice way of working. Um, it's almost like in a in an analogy, a metaphor. Imagine like building, you know, a car or a house or a spaceship or something like that. Um, if you test like the screw. Right, and you make sure that the screw works, and then you test the sheet metal, and you make sure that that works and it's the specification, and then you put the screw and the sheet metal together, and now you test those two together, right? And then you put the 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 you know this component with that component together, and you test that, and so on. As soon as like you you test things and you have issues, right? Then you can be fairly certain that it's not the screw because that already tested clearly, right? So it's probably the combination of the two, or maybe one of the other parts. And so similarly goes here. So that's my, maybe it seems like ridiculous to spend so much time trying to get this right and not just going like Google it or something like that. Uh, so that's what's happening. Also, you know, this project is a, is a learning opportunity and, and in some aspects like learning about stuff that I don't know and some things to refresh the memory of things that I've forgotten. Um, so yeah, okay. Well, um, I'll catch you up later.